I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Today comes from Mark 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and let them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, so as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So the Oscars are coming. How many of the... Uh, nominated movies for Best Picture have you gotten to see yet? I'm pretty far behind this year for some reason. I enjoy going to the movies. I enjoy seeing good movies. They have a way of transporting us, transporting us to new places in our hearts and in our minds. I wonder what is the movie that you remember in your mind uh, from when you were a child? The, the earliest movie you maybe ever saw or one of the earliest movies you ever saw. I can tell you for me, it was Jungle Book, Walt Disney's animated movie, dubbed in Spanish. And let me tell you, the songs in Spanish are pretty rocking as well, not just in English. Maybe some of you will remember a different kind of movie. Maybe for some generations among us, it could be maybe your first movies were a double feature Western, or maybe a Walt Disney or a Pixar movie, depending how old you are. There are a couple among us for whom the first movie could have been a silent movie. Charlie Chaplin's classic, The Tramp, came out in 1915. And if you haven't seen it, Google it, because it's online. You can watch it. It's about 30 minutes. My dad would have been two years old when that was released. Even so, our own Wren and Herschel and Dee Dee, they wouldn't have been born yet when this came out. But they might have seen a silent movie movie in a movie theater when they were little. I don't know if you've ever seen a silent movie, but back then, that's, that's all there was. They were accurately called motion pictures because it was just picture after picture after picture happening so quickly that it give, gave the sense of movement. But there was no dialogue and no sound happening in these movies. But they had these cue cards and these cue cards gave us, they took over this whole screen as the action was happening, and those cue cards gave us some of the dialogue. So it would say, well, she said this, or they said that, or it would give us a little bit of the plot so we would not be so lost. In a theater, a musician, perhaps playing a piano, perhaps playing an organ, would accompany the movie. <laughs> providing a soundtrack as the people experienced the movie. There was action on the screen. It was usually overacted. There was talking, but no sound. So just mouthing of words by the actors. Every so often, a cue card to tell us where we were in the story. All along, though, even as motion pictures, the silent motion pictures were commercially distributed, there were already experiment, experiments and work on making movies that would include sound. The audio was actually synced right onto the film, literally, like 
there is the film and on the side was the instructions, the instructions to the projector that would allow sound to come through. And so as the actors spoke, the sound was synced and we could hear what they were saying. Well, this changes everything. All of a sudden we are watching something as though it's really happening and we are able to hear it. And the previously entertaining soundless motion pictures now have to be differentiated from this new thing, talking pictures. And so we have movies and now we have talkies appropriately. And so imagine if the relationship that God has had with us as human beings would be presented as a silent movie. Imagine there we are in the movie theater, popcorn in hand, and the characters are on the screen and they seem larger than life, over the top stories, dramatic cliffhangers, our heroes and heroines going through the typical ups and downs of human life, and then the moments of proximity and distance from God. And every so often a cue card would appear on screen, maybe telling us what God was declaring, maybe telling us what Moses was proclaiming, maybe telling us what Elijah was prophesying. I can see in my mind's eye today's gospel lesson playing out as a silent movie scene. And as a good director would have planned it, that scene has clues which make the audience feel like they're already in the know. Jesus and the three disciples are walking up a high mountain, a holy place. And you think to yourself, oh, I've seen this movie before. It's like that movie when, when Moses went up and came back down with the Ten Commandments. I remember that one. Then there's Jesus who's talking with Peter and James and John and is telling them that there's a surprise coming. Oh, I've seen that movie too. I remember Elijah going up the mountain and telling everybody that God would hear his prayer and surprised everyone because God rained down fire and destroyed the idols. And so Jesus and the three disciples are walking up and then they stop. And with no warning and a bit of a jarring cinematic cut, the screen almost blanches out with a sudden radiant whiteness of Jesus' clothing with the three disciples squinting at the bright light. There's a little bit of smoke or mist. And as the disciples squinted, mysteriously there appeared two other people with Jesus. There is Moses. This is the giver of the law. And the camera zooms in on a tall, bearded old man. He's having an animated conversation with Jesus. Then to the right of Jesus is another old man, balding and thin. Oh, that's Elijah. He's the greatest prophet. He too is talking with Jesus. They seem to be having quite the conversation, but it's a silent movie. We can't hear what they're saying. We can't read their lips. We squint because of the bright light. And we get no cue cards. And the live music plays on and that's all we can hear. And Peter, Peter looks scared. He's saying something to Jesus back and forth, but there's no cue cards. That must not have been important anyway. And then at the distance, the, we see gathering clouds they get closer and closer and a dense cloud now approaches them and suddenly the whole screen is enveloped with this heavy fog and the whole screen, we can't see anything but shadows of these three figures that are being cast because of Jesus' radiance. And the music stops. And with no cue card to identify the speaker, we hear, we actually hear a voice. It's no longer a silent movie. We hear a voice whose message we remember we had seen on cue cards on earlier episodes. It's the same sentence that Jesus and maybe the crowd gathered had heard at his baptism. 
This is my son. I love my son. And then added to that, listen to him. So this, this changes everything. Now the screen is not filled with a dense fog. It's not even black and white anymore. It's vivid, full color. And Jesus is standing there by himself, the three disciples in front of him. And behind Jesus, a beautiful panorama, because we're on top of a mountain. And while there's no dialogue in this movie yet, we can hear the wind whipping around. We can hear their footsteps as they start making their way down the hill. And the point that Jesus makes to the disciples seems almost redundant. Well, don't say anything to anybody. They were shocked. They were speechless. They weren't saying anything to anybody. But what Jesus is meaning is saying, don't jump to conclusions just yet. Because there's more to come. More will be revealed. And he was right. The walk down the mountain was the beginning of a journey towards Jerusalem. And the key to that is that going to Jerusalem wasn't there to crown him as king, you know, now that he had the endorsement of Elijah and Moses. But that's not why they were going to Jerusalem. It was the beginning of a very hard lesson about love, but also about sacrifice and about obedience. That's the, the journey we start on Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, as we begin 40 days of Lent. Sometimes we get to have these mountaintop moments. These moments when suddenly this fog lifts. And like we've gone from grainy black and white movie to a high definition, full color, sharp video. And we might have in that moment of clarity, we might have a, a temptation to, to stay there in the mountain, away from everything else. Because here we get it. Away from the mundane more time to reflect on this insight we've gotten, or just to bask in the moment. We want to make that moment last. Maybe it was an unexpected moment of perspective. Maybe like the day when you became a parent. Or maybe it was that work conference you've been working so hard on, and yet, man, you were hitting all cil on all cylinders. Or maybe it was that quiet moment of solitude when you realized that you needed to change careers. Or that raw moment when injustice was truly personal and you vowed that we, you would stand up against it. In all of that, there was a voice from God, whether we acknowledged it or not. In all of that, there was a voice from God, clear in our minds. It was a guiding voice, a voice giving instruction. And it was pointing us in a new direction. Whether we acknowledged it or not, it has echoes of the voice which told these three disciples to listen to Jesus in a new way. Because if we take Jesus seriously, we take his message of love, of sacrifice, and of obedience seriously, then our roles, our outlook, our priorities are impacted, are transformed. If we listen to Jesus, everything changes. Thanks be to God for God's word for us. Amen.